You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to read the problem statement and come up with your own strategy for a solution. All right, so if you're looking at this problem and looking at the figure, it should look familiar to you. So we're basically taking the same cycle we've been analyzing for several problems now and modifying it still. So we have the addition of a reheater and also this guy right here, which is an open feed water heater. Both of these, hopefully in the end, will increase the efficiency of the entire cycle. So the first thing we've been asked to do is sketch the cycle on a TS diagram. In order to aid with that, let us label the following points around the cycle itself. So our diagram just got very busy here. So we have, instead of just the four state points we had in a basic cycle, we have up to nine here. We're saying state point one is the entrance of this pump. State point two is the exit of that pump and the entrance to the boiler. Notice there's a second pump here because we've got an intermediate pressure between the high pressure and low pressure turbine where the reheat occurs. Um, something else to notice in this diagram is that the flow rate through the boiler, which is given as 1.25 kilograms per second, is not the same as the flow rate through the condenser. There are different mass flow rates through different components of the system. Where this comes into play is right here. So we take some of the stuff that goes through the high pressure turbine, some of that is reheated and goes through the low pressure turbine, but the remainder of it goes to the open feed water heater, which is still, uh, and that stuff is still pretty hot, and that preheats the stuff before it goes to the boiler. Okay, so the moral of this story is be very careful with the mass flow rates. They're not the same through all the different components. So let's take a look at the TS diagram, which is also much busier than the last ones at which we've looked. So here's our TS diagram. I've tried to indicate on the diagram that there are different mass flow rates at different state points. It's kind of difficult to do, so I don't know that I would expect everybody to put these mass flow rates on the TS diagram, but I'm just trying to emphasize that point a little bit more. In any case, notice that we have two pumps. Here's pump uh, one. It pumps from an intermediate pressure to the boiler pressure, constant pressure line. Here is the expansion through the high pressure turbine from three to four happens isentropically, it's an ideal turbine. And here's where we take some stuff, bleed it off, have it go through the intermediate pressure through the open feed water heater, and the remainder is reheated back to the same uh, temperature, lower pressure than that of high pressure turbine, and then that in turn is expanded through the low pressure turbine, that's five to six across this high pressure turbine. Those two streams come together, they mix so that the stuff going into the boiler is a higher temperature than it was before, and the boiler doesn't have to add as much heat transfer to get it to the same state point before it enters the high pressure turbine. Okay, so you might want to spend a minute or so looking at this TS diagram, comparing it to the uh, figure of the different equipment, and make sure you understand why those lines look the way they do and where those state points are and why they are where they are. Okay, so the next step in the problem is to find the heat transfer rate in and out of each device and or the power in and out of each device. I've given you the hint that you should start with the open feed water heater. Now, if you didn't do that, and I hadn't given you that hint, you would have been fine. You would just analyze one piece of equipment at a time, and you'd find that you don't have everything you need to get numbers. And you just keep going around the cycle, analyzing each piece, and eventually you'll have as many equations as you do on notes. But the hint that I gave you here is such that you can find all the required mass flow rates, get some numbers for those ahead of time, so that when you do go to the pump, and then the boiler, and then the high pressure turbine, etc., you would be able to plug in some numbers. So let's take a look at that open feed water heater, start our analysis there. Here is our system. So we have the stuff from the condenser coming in at 8. We have the stuff bleeding off from the high pressure turbine at 9 coming in. And those leave at state point 1, which is going to be a saturated liquid. So I'm going to start with conservation of mass. 
Oh, surprise, surprise. We often just start with conservation of energy. We're starting with conservation of mass here because we have different mass flow rates. That's an important point to take into account. So this is operating at steady state. The MDT of the open feed water heater is zero, but I have two mass flow rates in and one leaving. So basically what this says is that the condenser mass flow rate combined with what I'm bleeding off from the high pressure turbine, I've labeled that M.9, those two things come in and they add up to the mass flow rate of the boiler which leaves the open feed water heater. As it is right now, this one equation has got one known in it, but two unknowns. I don't know either one of those mass flow rates, so I can't get numbers for those just yet. So now I'm going to throw conservation of energy at the open feed water heater. So throwing conservation of energy uh, at it gives me this. It is operating at steady state. It's funny that there's no heat transfer, even though this is called a heater. The reason there's no heat transfer is because the Q dot does not cross this boundary. All the heat transfer occurs between the fluid streams as they're mixing in the chamber. So it is called an open feed water heater, but all the heat transfer is internal to the system. Q dot is zero. It has new moving parts. You don't plug it in, so W dot is zero. Um, but here we actually have uh, multiple mass flow rates coming in. So I did not get rid of the summation sign there. I have two mass flow rates coming in and only one leaving. I have ignored kinetic and potential energy effects, which is a standard assumption for devices like this. So reducing conservation of energy gives me basically a balance between mass flow rates multiplied by their respective enthalpies coming in. Okay, so if I only had numbers for all the enthalpies, I could combine this with the first equation and get my mass flow rates. Here's where reference to our TS diagram comes in very handy. So let's start with H at 1, this guy right here. When I look at my TS diagram, I remind myself that this is an otherwise ideal cycle, meaning that uh, the stuff coming into that pump is a saturated liquid. I'm given the pressure, and I'm given the quality. It's zero because it's a saturated liquid. So that's enough to find H1. So I look that up in my steam tables. I use E's. I use my property calculator, whatever floats your boat. And then I look at uh, the second enthalpy that I need, which is H at 9. So I go on H at 9. What is that going to be? Hmm. And I take a look at it, and I realize that I do know the pressure, but I'm trying to think what the second property is. Well, looking at our TS diagram, H4 and H9 are exactly the same thing. That's where I'm bleeding the stuff off of the high-pressure turbine. So I do know the pressure. The second property I know is S at state point 9. It's the same as S at 3 because the stuff expanding through the high pressure turbine expands isentropically. So I do have enough information to find H at 9. Of course, in order to do that, the first thing I have to do is find S at state point 3, which I do because I know the boiler pressure and the temperature coming in. So I find S at 3. Look that up using, again, the steam tables or E's or anything that you uh, prefer. And then I use that result, S is equal to 7.167 kilojoules per kilogram, and the pressure of the reheater to go back and find H at 9. So there I have it. There is H at state point 9. I repeat this process with uh, H at 8. It's very similar because H at 8 uh, is found because I know the pressure. And I know the entropy at state point 8 is the same as the entropy at state point 7. That is the low uh, pressure pump. It operates isentropically also. So the way I find H8 is first to find S at state point 7. It is the entropy of a saturated liquid at the condenser pressure. Both of those given to me. So I use uh, S7, look that guy up, and I plug it in uh, to my... Uh, property relations to find H8. Once again, using steam tables, E's, property calculator, whichever method you prefer. So now I've got all of my properties. I've got my H at 8, 9, and at 1. Two equations, two unknowns being the two mass flow rates. I solve those guys simultaneously, and I find my mass flow rates are 0.8831 through the condenser and 0.3669 
going uh, out of the high pressure turbine uh, being bled off before I do the reheat. Those two numbers should add up to 1.25, and as a check, you would want to make sure that that is in fact the case. Okay, so I found uh, the two mass flow rates, other than the mass flow rate through the boiler of this problem. The rest of this problem looks very similar to the previous cycle analysis. So we're not going to review each individual component conservation of energy and property relationships here. That's a skill that you should be getting pretty good at. So I'll just alert you that that's what you can do. You continue with conservation of energy and using property relations around the entire cycle, just like you've done before to get all the other Q dots and W dots. I recommend that you do this in symbols only, and then don't plug in numbers until it's clear to you that you have as many equations as you do unknowns. Um, sometimes you'll be able to get numbers right away. Sometimes you might not. Okay, So don't freak out. Just keep writing equations and labeling and make sure that you have everything you need. I find ease very helpful here. In fact, I've got an ease code for this problem available for download on the website. Now, it's actually not an ease file itself. It's just a text file, but you can uh, cut and paste it directly into the equations window of ease and start playing around with numbers. That's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, here are the results of doing that. I've cut and pasted this from the solutions window in ease directly. So let's notice a couple of things here. The original cycle was uh, roughly 43% efficient, I believe. And here we've done a reheat with an open feed water heater also, and the efficiency has gone up to almost 46%, several percent. So that is a huge increase in efficiency. And when I calculated efficiency, this is the equation that I used. Notice that in this equation, I've got big W dot and big Q dot. These are the powers and the rates of heat transfers in kilowatts in this equation. Okay. Also notice that I'm paying for both Q of the boiler and Q of the reheat. What I cannot use in this problem is that the efficiency is equal to those specific powers and heat transfers. In other words, the W dots divided by mass flow rates. These you can find as a simple difference in enthalpy. You need mass flow rate times the difference in enthalpy. You need the big W's, not the little W's. Why? Because there are different mass flow rates through different components. So if you get used to just plugging and chugging into a formula for efficiency that's got enthalpies without thinking about what it means, you're going to be way off base here. So moral of that story is do not blindly use that formula because of the differing mass flow rates.